Hola amigos, un gusto saludarlos de nuevo. En esta ocasión eh, tenemos el honor de contar con la presencia de John Adeo, VP de Canales y Alianzas de HackerOne. Una empresa nueva, un proveedor nuevo con el que estamos recién firmando y que es único en su tipo. Y ahorita John nos va a explicar. The, welcome John. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. Yeah. I was I, I was uh, telling our friends that the HackerOne is a new a new vendor uh, in, into the ecosystem of maps, but it's very unique. It is very unique. Yeah. You tell us uh, yeah. about why is HackerOne so unique? Yeah, we're I mean what's interesting about us is we're not a traditional cybersecurity technology. You know, we are not an endpoint protection or a firewall. What we provide is access to a security research community made up of two million hackers, security researchers, to go do things like penetration testing, vulnerability testing, bug bounty programs. And the, the platform today connects our customers to that community to help drive what is the most elusive vulnerabilities that are found in their network. So what's really unique about that is the ability for a customer to work with us to get access to all these amazing researchers, ethical hackers that we work with. Good, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Could you tell us more about how this began? Yeah, it began about 10 years ago. Um, There's about four co-founders in our business. Um, they were hackers. Hackers, they were working on vulnerability programs. Uh, and uh, the co-founders came together and decided to start this company. And it really started with just the community-based kind of engagement around vulnerability disclosure. So most companies run a vulnerability disclosure program that are more mature, but what they noticed was it wasn't a very strong uh, programmatic approach to it. It was like, send me an email, um, you know, maybe I'll do something about it. So they built this process and the system around it, and then they started running things like bug bounty programs where they can reward the hackers for submitting vulnerabilities and the evolution of the Hacker One uh, organization really evolved from that. You know, sometimes the name hacker, we are talking about the bad guys, but right. you are not talking this kind of hacker. We are not talking these kind of hackers. No, we're talking ethical hackers, security ethical researchers. Hackers. Um, they're, they're people that come from all kinds of organizations. Uh, they, some of those work at our clients and actually participate in the program. Okay. Some of them work independently. Um, they're from all over the globe and They're, you know, they see themselves as being part of solving the most challenging, elusive security issues that our customers face. Um, and so what we, our community management team manages the relationship between all of those ethical hackers, researchers, um, and they participate in joining up to the community, being part of it, submitting vulnerabilities, building up their profile. And as they grow within the community, they get invited to more and more exclusive Uh, programs that then pay money for their work. And so we have we have some hackers that have made millions of dollars with us um, through the program, and it's pretty amazing to, to see, yeah. And um, this means you are a platform right. where you connect end users yep. who needs, and uh, we are talking about the services and yep. ethical hackers yep. who help These end users to uh, solve the problems. That's correct, right. And, then, and then within Hacker One, we have some services, uh, triage services that help customers extend their operations team. So then we add some value around it as well. And we're also like, a, we're, we're hoping for our resellers and the, the community of partners that would come on with us that see the service opportunity to think about, hey, I want to do triage services. I want to help with being participating in these programs and helping with the remediation of the solutions because we don't remediate, we just provide the answer to the, this is what we found and this is what you should solve for. So what we do see is a credible opportunity for partners to be involved in that journey. Uh, can we define which product we offer to okay. have one? Uh, vulnerability disclosure programs, bug bounty program, pen testing as a service, security code review audit, Uh, we do things like challenges, which are a smaller version of a bug bounty or a pen test kind okay. of work. So when we bring all of that together, um, that makes up most of the portfolio. And then within that, we've just launched some things like a free vulnerability disclosure program. So for small companies who don't have the need for a really big programmatic approach, but want to 
be better organized around this. Uh, we've just launched that and we really want to make that available to the community members underneath maps. Yeah. Bug bounty. So we bug bounty. We're just playing that more about that. Yeah, bug bounty is amazing. It is the best way to think about bug bounty is pen testing over the course of long periods of time. And so a customer would uh, provide assets that they want to be continuously tested by the research community. Um, and they will pay a reward for finding vulnerabilities at different levels. So like a basic vulnerability that's listed early, like that's kind of unknown, maybe gets a very small bounty, but something that's new, and what we're gonna talk about this afternoon is novel, new and novel, is something that's never been found before that's unique to their system, they'll pay a reward at a much higher level. And so this runs over long periods of time, like a year, sometimes some of our customers are with us for multiple years as they're running these bug bounty programs. What our customers get out of it is constant feedback, constant input from the research community into their systems that they're rolling out because just because they did it at one point in time, they're rolling out new updates and new features. So they want those constant eyes and uh, testing on those kind of Yeah, problems. and in this uh, period, uh, does the hacker change or normally is a... Uh, they could. They, sometimes they'll invite hackers um, into a program. Sometimes they'll move people through the program and switch them up. So the, the, the flexibility is there to make those kind of decisions about who participates, how long they participate and what uh, what they do in there. So, how do you warrant this, the, end, the end user that the hard deals are ethical? Yeah. So we have a, a first, anybody who signs up to our platform has to sign up as a code of conduct to working with us. Uh, secondly, we do validate who those individuals are. So we don't, uh, you, you know, they have to be valued. You have to submit identification and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like a police, no? <laughs> Correct. I, you know, and we need to know. And and more importantly, if you participate in reward programs where you get paid, we have to have banking information and all that kind of stuff. So our, our community team management manages that. And if they see any behavior outside of uh, what somebody should be behaving is, you know, they can be removed from the platform. Secondly, um, it's sort of self-policed in a lot of ways that the more people contribute, the better their profile, you know, they they get known better and then they get invited into the the yes. rewards. Where like they, other, yeah. they get more stars. But if they were to do something outside of that, they'd be instantly removed, you know, so it'd be, it would not be a very uh, lucrative, uh, you know, uh, it would have a bad impact on their uh, on their brand to itself, yeah. Another question, normally yeah. here there are vendors that are uh, pen testing, yep. automatic pen testing. Right. In this case, yep. which is the difference? Uh, so automatic pen testing is a great tool because it, it, it's automated what humans would have done at the, like, at the standard level, right? So I'm running scans, I do this, I do like, so it's, it's taking in just automating a lot of the manual stuff that's with them. The difference is it can't think like a human and it can't be artistic and creative and that's, what hackers do, like their art form is amazing. When they start to think about connecting systems and looking for vulnerabilities in one system, how it relates to another system and bringing it all that together is really hard for a system to automate doing that. So um, this is a very unique approach in regards to thinking through that types of vulnerabilities. Uh, one's not, I wouldn't say like one over the other, they just play different roles for different reasons. And I think automated tools have a place in our tech stack for Companies, what we're offering is a very, uh, a much more mature answer, uh, powered by humans, you know, and that within that is uh, other technologies to support. Very different. Process. Very different. Very different. Yeah. Uh, how do you see it's going to be the future of these services? Yeah, it's a really good question. AI yeah. is going to play a role, not in what, I mean, it'll play a role in what the hackers do because they use tools to run their yes. tests and things like that. But within our platform, it's getting more intelligence to help uh, bring that information to the surface, allow for an operations team to understand all of the data that's coming in, to cross-correlate all this information. I mean, we could even translate it now into, like, hey, translate the findings into Spanish, right? But all of this starts to play a role to make it just more efficient in the way customers interact with the community, and more importantly, when they get all the information in, how they use that information to help fix their systems up, so. Yeah. I imagine that they, right now you are in 
including uh, Gen, Gen AI in the in the platform, no? Correct, yeah, yeah. We hacker one AI, HAI. Um, so it's embedded in the platform um, and it is focused on around operational efficiency and making the user experience a much more uh, a much better place. Yes, we are in the AI boss. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I think uh, and this question could be more for uh, for the researcher, no? Yeah. But do you see any new threats that could be dangerous? Um, like I think what I would say is rather than like being explicit about a new threat is the threat vector, uh, meaning that like AI right now is incredibly useful, but it's also an incredible threat vector. Um, and what meaning is that people can manipulate AI for doing a lot of different things. You know, whether it's manipulating simple bots to respond. Um, there were ones in the US where somebody was able to manipulate it and buy cars for a dollar because they basically had to write a contract, right? So um, these different threat vectors of how AI is being implemented, I think is going to be one of the areas we lean into a little bit more. And so we're, our, we do have a team of people that, uh, uh, a subset of our researchers that do what they call AI red teaming. So they're very specific to working in and attacking AI systems and getting them to try to break and behave differently and seeing where their vulnerabilities are. This is amazing. And it's, a, it's a big opportunity. So any organization out there today that's rolling out, building their own AI, rolling out AI for public consumption and use really needs to be thinking about how they get it tested to make sure that it's behaving the way it should be behaving because the, the brand implication, the other implications around it could be really serious. Yeah. Yes. And yesterday, I read a, a new concept, bring your own AI to the work. And I said, oh, this could be a big problem because yeah. if I can download uh, LLM, install it in my computer and use it to do my work yeah. and then connect it into this, yeah. this is another big problem, right. security problem. Yeah. No? yeah, it can be for sure. So, I mean, I think, you know, uh, security policies need to catch up internally how people use AI. So, you know, it starts with user education. Hey, do I connect to some system that I don't know and start uploading contracts to review? You don't know, like, you know, I put sensitive content now into an AI system that's not controlled by an organization. And so there really needs to be a lot of awareness around the use of it, how it's used, when it's used. And more importantly is the models that it's drawing on, you know, do they come with bias? Do they come with uh, an intent that is not really how we want it to behave. Yes, uh, this is one of the big, big problems, the bias, you know? Yeah. I think, uh, depending what where you got the data set, it can be... Yeah. And what about hallucination? No? Right, and you got hallucinations, and so, yeah, it's... So I would say right now, like, I, I don't... Like, it's a threat vector from the sense of there's so much we're learning, and there's so much more to come, and it's evolving so fast. You know, it's like, I mean, we went from talking about chat GPT and people go, what is that? To like everybody using it and then models are out there and it's like, it's ubiquitous now in so many ways, so. Yeah. Do you know this morning, this morning I saw a video where a eight year old girl, uh -huh. she's programming a bot to answer, I don't know about the Harry Potter. Okay. Eight year olds. Right. But you know, she was programming the bot, uh -huh. only asking ChatGPT. Right. ChatGPT do that, do that, do that. At the end, yeah. she got all the code. Wow. She didn't know how to code. Right. But it right. doesn't matter. She 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 knows how to tell the ChatGPT right. what she needs. Right. Right. Amazing. That is amazing. And so. you know, for us as uh, veterans in this uh, business, yep. when I use AI, I use a lot uh -huh. ChatGPT. But I use it like uh, my copilot. Uh -huh. This girl yeah. was using, wasn't using it as a copilot, right, was it right. as the, the one who programmed. Yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. she was coding. Yeah, we're going to see more of it in coding. I think that's going to also come with some challenges in regards to how code is de delivered and where people are using it and the repetitive nature of maybe a vulnerability in a code yeah. that's used over and over again. So there's a lot here that's unfolding in front of us so fast. And yeah. the quality of and the, the quality. Uh, yeah. I suppose that you have a lot of uh, success stories. We do. Could you tell us one, two? Yeah, we do. I, I, you know, I'm really one of the things when I joined Hacker One was just how amazing our customer base is. I mean, it's 
brands like Aeromexico. I flew here on Aeromexico. I'm so happy that they're a customer of ours. You know, Netflix, Amazon, Amazon.com, AWS. Uh, you know, so we've got big brands that leverage us across the board, Department of Defense in the US, the Ministry of Defense in the UK. So we work with government agencies, financial service agencies, banking and finance, to online consumer brands, you know, that people would know. And some of the some of the partners, some of your partners in the room today are customer bazaars, right? Security companies that are using us to run bug bounty and vulnerability disclosure programs. So I'm like, well, we've got some really great brands and it's really just at the surface. We know there's so much more here as we think about extending into new markets like Mexico and further down into the Latin American markets, so. How is the Latin market for uh, Hacker One? Yeah, it's really new for us. You know, we've done early engagement has been a little bit more where customers have come to us direct. So we want to work with you. What I think we're starting to see is now a little bit more of a wave where the awareness is getting out there. Uh, we were in Sao Paulo just not long ago at one of those events. So like the, it's starting to build and I think people are starting to notice the brand more, but more importantly, people are coming around to the idea of working with something you said earlier, working with ethical hackers and what does that mean? So, um, so it's really new, but that means there's a lot of opportunity um, and we're really excited about yes, this partnership yes, with Yes, I think that, yeah. and we see that the hacker one could be a, a very good complement for us, for yep. our bars, yep. and of course for the end use. Yeah, you know, I do. Because I, it, it, it's an incredible compliment for your portfolio, so yes. thank you. Yes, yeah. and I think uh, we are hiring millions of ethical hackers. Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you know Mexico? I know Mexico. <laughs> Can I say Mexico? Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for the opportunity. I really thank appreciate so it for, for being us. here. What a great event, and we're really looking forward to our partnership, so thank you. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias, amigos. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.